be alone. I'ma king you a pawn. Make your next move your best move. Let's get it on. Checkmate haters can't do much. Two faders. Y'all make the newspaper. We make new paper. Holler your way too real or true fakers. Choose now and choose later. Old friends caught a few vapors. It's cool because they lose major league. Not even in the major league. Thank God for every night that I prayed I'd be on top. Now I can't stop, won't stop. Take that, take that. Fake rap, stay back. Y'all clowns on me, we don't play that. This is Prince Dykes, and this is the Royal Financial Investment you Group. In I'm shrimp, you eat your Today's topic is going to be why we struggle, and we're also going to get into uh, questions that I was asked about my uh, different topics. Uh, we're going to get into derivatives, TSPs versus IRAs. Uh, how to make money off a of little to no income. Those are other questions that's asked. But the first topic we're going to do, we're going to get straight into why do people struggle. So why do people struggle? From my knowledge and from what I've seen with people, the number one reason, not the number one, but a couple reasons that add up to why most people struggle financially. Um, the first thing is financial education. A lot of people, it wasn't either their parents didn't know, a lot of parents didn't know, um, and they didn't pass that down to their kids. They didn't know about, you know, saving CDs, um, ways to handle money, ways to IRAs, uh, things like that, mutual funds. They didn't know about those things, ETFs. So a lot of parents didn't know about it, and they didn't teach their kids about it. So what did their kids grow up and do? They usually, you, you get your first financial background from your parents. That's where you get your first lesson from, right? So a lot of parents didn't know about it, so they te they don't teach it to their kids. And school and college doesn't teach you about investing. You know, it teaches you maybe about how to manage a bank account, but it t doesn't teach you how to save and invest. It lets you know that it, it exists, but it doesn't teach you how to do it. So this person goes out in their life, this, you know, young man or young woman goes out into life, and that's where the... Uh, the cycle kind of continues where they don't know. They have to run into a lot of bumps in the road before they figure out uh, how to how to financially educate themselves by going through the game of life. The next reason is so that reason was uh, financial education. Right. The next reason is um, when people finally get a job or they finally do something, they like to help too many people. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but I see it all the time. When you look at players that's in the NFL or you look at some people that finally get their dream job or they finally get whatever, they try to help too many people. They want to help mom. They want to help dad. They want to help their cousin, their brother, and they want to buy their mom, their house, their dad, their car, things like that. But they're not all the way established themselves. So what happens is they usually go out and they create too much debt and they try to help too many too many other people without setting themselves up first what you need to do is set yourself up first before you try to help somebody else so a lot of people they branch out and start collecting all this debt as soon as they get something maybe it be the military or maybe it's the uh, nba nfl whatever the case is um, as soon as they get something they try to branch out and they start doing way too much for other people without getting themselves fixed first now, some situations are special where you have to do it. That's understandable. But some people just want to be nice and say, hey, well, you helped me when I was growing up. So let me do this and do that and do that. You can do those things, but make sure you get yourself established first. So trying to help too, um, too many people is another thing that I noticed. Improper planning. This is a big one with people that go throughout life. They see something and they just do something just out of the, the uh, sure fact of, "Ooh, I like that. Hey, that's a nice house. Let's get that house. They don't plan for the house. They think, oh, is there a way I can get this house? Then they want to go get it. They say, oh, wow, this, you know, crap, you're not seeing people do this. Oh, wow, that baby looks pretty. Uh, you know what? I want one. So they have a kid. You have a kid without planning for the kid. And how it usually happens is, let's say if you have a kid too early, you know, let's say if you have a kid maybe at the age of 22 or whatever. Some people, another thing is, before I slip off topic, a lot of people when they have children, they have children based on, hey, I'm 22 now, I'm 23, 24, 26, whatever the case is, instead of basing off of where they at in life progressively. You know, are you done with school yet? Do you have your profession yet? Do you have your career choice? Yada, yada. A lot of people say, hey, I'm 23, I'm getting old, so I want to have a child before I get too old. So they go out, they have a child. Then what happens is now they're trying to struggle with trying to find a, a stable job they're trying to find a better job because now they have to pay care they have to pay for the child they have to pay for daycare a lot of other bills come along with having children you know diapers formula yada yada 
So now they're saying, hey, I need to find me a steady job. Let me find a good job. And, you know, in order for me to get this good job, I need to go to school. And so now that their life has become uh, a whole lot tougher because now they have to try to figure out how we're going to work, go to school and take care of this child. So by the time they get through school and by the time they get through, you know, struggling and yada, yada, they get to the point where, OK, they finally have this career or they finally have a decent income to where they can supply for this child. But now it's about child is probably 12. Now they're probably a teenager. And, you know, as kids get older, their wants and needs become more and more expensive. You know, before they just wanted a little toy. Now they want a car. Now they want a tuition. Now they want a savings account, things like that. So a lot of people by not properly planning, put themselves in situations to where they struggle. Um, another way you can think about it is let's say if this is the same exact person instead of just going out and saying, hey, I just want to have this kid or whatever. You can just say, hey, um, I'm in a situation with a person or a guy or whatever, but I'm not going to have any kids until I'm at this point in life to where I have an education. I have the my career that I want. Everything is going the way I want it to go. So I'm stable to where I can take care of myself and I can take on the burdens of having a kid without anyone else. Not to say I know some people get in a situation where they may be married or they may be in a relationship that may go south and they may turn into a single parent. But while you're in those relationships, you got to plan for yourself. You got to say, hey, I want to make sure I am good, even though right now I'm being taken care of by this person or whatever. But I would I need to make sure I am good. I need to make sure I have the proper education, the skills uh, or whatever or business or whatever to be able to take care of this expense that this child is going to bring on. So, excuse me. There, but so if you do it that way. You know, let's say if you go through school, you have your career now. Now you bring a child into the world, you know, not saying that you're not going to struggle, but it makes it a whole lot easier. You don't have to worry about working and school and yada, yada, this and that. You already done done those things before plan, before time. All you're doing now is adding on extra. You know, you say, hey, I want to get an even better job or now I want to get a promotion or whatever the case may be. So improper planning. A lot of people see things and they just say, hey, I want it. And they don't think about the repercussions of actually. How can I set myself up for, you know, success? Ooh, that new car, can I afford it? Yes. Does it look nice? Yes. But why go out and get a $400 car note when I can set this to the side for, put this in the IRA, $400 a month, or I can put this into an investment or whatever. Something that's going to bring me money over time. So let's get into the questions that, uh, the topics that people um, sent in to me. So the first one is, we're going to get into come from Andy Moulter, derivatives. What are derivatives? I'm going to break this down to um, everyday common way of thinking, right? Derivatives are things, are, are ways you can invest into something without actually buying that thing. I know that's kind of crazy that I just said, but let me break it down for you a little bit more. So it's like, uh, let's say if you enter a drawing to buy a brand new 2000 Lamborghini, right? And they're saying, hey, uh, we're only going to make 200 of these cars and we're going to give these tickets out to 200 people. So these 200 people, you know, when the car is finished being built, they have the ability to be able to buy this car in the future. The ticket does not get guarantee them that they're going to buy the car, but now they have the right to be able to buy this car. Right. So let's say if I go, I get a ticket. Right. All the tickets are sold out. In a year or two down the line, while the new Lamborghini is being built, I decide, hey, you know, I don't want it anymore. Or I decide, hey, I'm going to sell my ticket to somebody else. So I meet another person that said, I find somebody else like, hey, do you want to get in on this new Lamborghini that they're building? They're like, yeah, that's great. I say, hey, well, how about I sell you my ticket and, you know, you can have the ability to be able to buy this Lamborghini when it's uh, finished being built. And the person's like, great. Now, when I originally got the ticket, I maybe paid $1,000 for it, right? But due to supply and demand, since there's no more tickets out there, and maybe the value of that car has risen, I can now sell my ticket for $2,000, right? So this person doesn't, I don't have the car. I don't own the car. All I, all I have is the right to be able to buy the car. That ticket is a derivative, right? And how this happens in the stock market or the market itself is like, you know, you have option trading, you have futures where people, they don't buy a stock, for example. They don't buy Netflix, for example. They say that's a stock. They don't buy the stock. They buy the right to be able to buy the stock in the future or the right to be able to sell the stock in the future. So as the stock goes up, 
their uh, contracts gain money. That's a derivatives, right? It's a little bit deeper than that, but that's just a basic, you know, touch the, you know, touching the surface of it. So a lot of people, when you see people in the futures market, they trade oil or they trade, you know, milk or whatever. They're not actually buying the milk or they're not actually buying the soil. All they're doing is buying the right to be able to buy. It. So these people are buying and trading derivatives. So in option trading, when people buy contracts, you're buying contracts to say, hey, I have the ability to be able to buy Netflix in the future for this price. Now, as the price of Netflix goes up, my contract become it becomes more worth. It gains value. It's worth more and more and more. Then I can turn around and sell that contract for more than what I brought it for. Those are derivatives. That's how option trading kind of works. So. That's what a real life saw when I gave you the example of the Lamborghini and this is how it relates to the market. So if you got any more questions, please let me know. So the next one is came from Miss Reed. She asked the question of how to make money off of little to no income, right? I know that sounds crazy. How can you make money when you don't have money? So if you don't have money, let's say you can one thing I can think of is that you know you may think of, hey, I want to start a business, right? You say, I want this business to say, um, I have this idea where I want to open up a shoe company or whatever. So you say, hey, I don't have any money. How can I possibly open up a shoe company? You know, first thing you can do, you can get a loan from the bank. If you can't get a loan from the bank because you have little to no income, what you can do, you can find initial investors. It's a lot of investors out there. A lot of people like Royal Financial Investment Group that have money that says, hey, I want to invest this into startups. And what you do, you build yourself up a business plan or you go to or you go to, you know, it's a lot of sites out there. Or you go to an accountant or somebody who uh, went to school for it to build your business plan. You build your business plan and you propose this to investors. You tell investors, hey, um, this is my company. You've seen the TV show Shark Tank. If you haven't, you know, you can Google it or, you know, uh, go on YouTube to watch a couple episodes of it. So these people, they go and they pitch their business plan. Hey, this is what I am. You know, this is what I do. This is what I want to do with it. And then these investors say, hmm, you know what? I like that idea. Hey, I give you this amount of X amount of dollars for, you know, to buy a piece of your company. You take that money and you can actually start a business that way. So that's one way you can do it. You can take an idea, drop a business plan, put the pedal to the metal, and you can go out and get initial investors. And you can take those investors money to actually um, execute your business plan. So that's the way if you don't have money, you don't have an income, that's the way that you can be self-made to you can create a business by going into business with other people. It's a lot of investment groups out there. It's a lot of uh, investor websites out there that you make a proposal to them. You send in your business plan and things like that. Now, how to make your business plan, your proposal stand out is, number one, I would say educate yourself, take some business classes, um, maybe get a business degree that can at least let people know that you have the basic understanding of how a business should work or yada, yada. Now, you don't have to have the education side of the house. You can say, hey, I ran this business or I do this with this business or I have done this with this business that give people the notion of, OK, this person knows how a business is supposed to run. The uh, second thing you can do, you can also, um, you know, when you have a business proposal, yeah, it looks nice, but people like to see what have you done so far? Have you created a website? Do you have any products? Do you have any customers already? Are you putting the pedal to the metal? Because it's easy to sit down and talk and say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But what have you done? So by doing things that let somebody know, hey, this person is serious. They're actually working towards it. They're actually letting it become uh you know, fruitful is actually being put out to play. TSP versus IRA. So a TSP is, is a 401k, it's a military government, and essentially it is an IRA, right? Um, in an IRA is an individual retirement account, and what TSP does is you have two options you can do. You can go through the traditional route, or you can go through the, um, it just slipped my mind there. The Roth. Yes, you can get the Roth or traditional. What this does is saying, let's this, this break it down, right? So if you have $4,000 a month without taxes, so you get paid $4,000 and you have a traditional Roth IRA, you know, inside of TSP, TSP is pretty much a, a Roth IRA. You can either be traditional or you can have a Roth. So um, you, you, get, you make $4,000 a month and Uncle Sam may say, hey, Uncle Sam, traditional IRA says, Uncle Sam, before you touch this, you can you can allot amount ten percent 
take 10% of my $4,000 and put it into my IRA before it's taxed. So $4,000, 10% of that is $400. So $400 every month goes into your IRA, correct? Now, when you turn 60 years old and you go to return on that, Uncle Sam is going to say, hey, you know what? You never paid taxes on that. I gave you all that money before it was taxed. Then they're going to tax you when you get ready to pull it out. That's how traditional work. A Roth works this way. Hey, you make $4,000 a month. Uncle Sam takes away $300, leaves you with $3,700. Then you say, hey, um, take 10% of that after it's taxed and put it into my Roth IRA. Then, you know, you pay $370. But when you get ready to go pull on it, you already paid taxes on it. And also, when you have a Roth IRA, you can pull out on that money at any time. Now, this, um, I saw Ms. Reed wrote, hey, you know, um, it's an insane amount of expenses if you want to pull out your money. The way it's set up is those penalties are put there to make you not want to take your money out. Be like, hey, I have $30,000 into my Roth IRA. I really want to buy this car or I want to do this or I hit hard times. Let me go pull out my 30000 then you're going to look at the fees and expenses. You can be like, wow, I might as well just keep it in there. So you leave it in there. So it's a way to help keep your money locked away to where if you really, 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 really wanted it, you have to go through, you know, a lot of hoops to get to it. It's just not like, hey, I want to get this money. It's like a checking account. You can go grab it like nothing. Because if it was that easy, a lot of people, they would deplete their IRAs within their lifetime. So the cool thing about a Roth IRA, let's say, for example, I can borrow against myself. With a TSP, if I had $30,000 inside of my TSP, I can turn around and let's say time came up uh, down the road where I said, hey, man, you know what? I really want to buy this you know, car or whatever the case is. I can go out and take a loan against myself for an extremely low interest rate and the interest I'm paying myself. So how that, ha how that happens is you go in, you say, hey, out of this $30,000, let me get $10,000. TSP says here. Here's $10,000 for you. I take the $10,000 and TSP is going to say, hey, in order to stay on your retirement plan, in order to, you know, in order to stay on your retirement plan, in order to, you know, uh, keep progressing forward with your retirement, you have to pay X amount of dollars a month. So let's take this situation, for example. I want to go buy a brand new car for $20,000. I go to my TSP. And I take out a $20,000 loan against myself off of my Roth IRA and my TSP. I get the $20,000. Instead of paying a car note, I play my TSP back. Which one you rather own? I mean, which one you rather owe? Would you rather owe the bank or would you rather owe yourself? I think I'd rather owe myself. Because if you owe yourself, I go in, I take the $20,000. Now I have the title. I have an asset. I can now sell this car for a profit. Then I have to pay myself back. You know, instead of paying a car note, I'm just paying myself back. You know, now I'm definitely not telling you to go pull on your IRA to go buy a car because a car depreciates in value. An IRA appreciates in value. It gains money over time. A car will lose money over time. So it doesn't matter. You know, you have to think about it. Education, your mindset of how money works is the biggest thing that people lack. When I went into education earlier in the video. So. Uh, hopefully that cleared that up. Uh, what is the IRA? Uh, how to make money on a little to no income and how you can take your money out of the IRA. You can start a business. You can start a little small business, you know, get your LLCs um, and start working it that way. And also I got into derivatives and why most people struggle. So just think about that. The next time you go to yeah, for supporting us. And as always, stay tuned. This is the Royal Financial Investment Group. Thank you.